Today's episode contains information about universal destinations and experiences. The host's opinions may not align with the opinions, values or ethics of NBC Universal or its affiliates. We've never had a pre-show guest. It contains information about universal becoming social media account holders. You are listening to Orlando Unplugged, celebrating life in living color with Dustin and Ashley. Grab a cocktail or a mocktail and let's get unplugged, Orlando. So this is literally our second attempt at doing our intro. We did a whole intro and realized that the audio was set up to only play out of one speaker. So if you're listening in like a car or headphones, it would only play out of like the driver's side or your left ear. You know what I could go for though right now? What? One of those Volcano Bay cocktails. Well, we'll talk about that later. I know, but I want one right now. <laughs> what did we talk about in our original opening? Oh, our new intro. Yeah, it was really good. Um, let us know your thoughts on it and how you feel. I really like it. I don't know. I just, I, I was playing, great. I was playing a couple weeks ago and I just wanted, I was like, how funny would it be if our show opened, like people are tuning in on the radio and they're channeling through like all these random channels. And see, yeah. this is when I'm happy that like, I, I do really well when it comes to our social media, but when it comes to like our vibing for our our intro shit and our music and stuff like that i am so glad you got this so because, like, what you're saying is i am the creative <sighs> hire and you are the personality hire and the financial hire <laughs> okay i'll give you that <laughs> thank you um so typically we would have started off our podcast with some pre-show topics oh, wait wait, wait. Oh. we're now in the pre-show segment well, typically, we would have started off our show with some pre-show topics. However, this week, we've decided to take a little pause from that. Because, I, I don't know about you, but I really needed a mental break. This week has been, the whole world this week has just been rough. Very, very, very rough. So, it was kind of nice to unplug, unwind, and just kind of take a break. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, unplug. <laughs> I did not do that on purpose. So... <laughs> Thank you very much. You're so welcome. this is going to be just kind of us talking about our vacation, talking about what we did. No, and no, no. Our staycation. Our staycation. Correct. What we did, what we liked, what we didn't like, and um, if we would do it again. So come hang out with us. <gasps> is it time? So, for this past week-ish, it was, what, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Oh, my God, it was, yeah. It was. It was so weird. It was so um, nice. We decided to have a little staycation uh, with some friends. So, we stayed at two Universal Resorts. Two. Uh, we went to Universal, we went to Volcano Bay, and we went to uh, Magic Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a love a spur of the moment. Which, that one, that one was very spur, spur of, of the, the moment, moment which literally. we'll get into all of that. Um, but to start off for our fun week on Thursday, I got off work. No, no, you... no. You could, we have to back up. We have to back up to Wednesday because I'm at the office and you call me and go, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, I, um, I don't know. Why? Well, guess what? You're now staying with us at a Universal Hotel. And I was like, okay, I'll pack my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so... Then Thursday. Then Thursday, yes. Um, I went to work and I got off work, packed up my, my stuff, and then we headed to Universal's, uh, one of their premier resorts, which is Lowe's Portofino Bay. Beautiful Which was hotel. the very first resort Universal and Lowe's Hotel and Company ever partnered on together. And it was the first resort we had here at the uh, Florida campus for Universal. I don't think I knew that. You did not? No. I've never stayed at Portofino, so this was my first time. I'm a Royal Pacific kind of girl. So um, it was my very, that was my very first time staying at Portofino. So this is a random fun fact. And I, I will say I 
cannot. No, it's a fast fact. It's a, yeah, it's a universal fast fact. Fast fact. Um, I cannot confirm nor deny if this is like the actual truth, but this is what I have been told from several different people in my life was that Steven Spielberg was the person who told Universal to build Portofino Bay what? for the resort. That's so, so cool. So ev- evidently Universal like wanted to build a resort, but they didn't know what they wanted to build. So they called Steven Spielberg, who was a major key player in Universal Studios Florida. And they said, hey, what should we do? And evidently he took that phone call while he was sitting in Portofino Bay, Italy with his wife on vacation. And he said, why don't we build Portofino Bay? Look at Steven. But again, I don't know if that is true. That's what I've heard. But I've never like heard it from someone that I know is a good, good source for the, like Universal Studios. So that's a folklore that I choose to believe because I think it's cool. <laughs> I love that he he plays such a factor. I mean, he really does play such a factor at Universal. So that would not surprise me that it, if his opinion was something that was taken into effect. Yeah. So um, what we'll do is we'll break down our stay and everything towards the end. But to start off, we want to tell you guys about about the resort and some of the amenities that it has. Um, so, Ashley, I think we'll just bounce off of each of these. So, yeah, we'll go Univer- um, so Portofino Bay has the Lowe's title in front of it because it is a Michelin star resort. It's one of their Michelin star resorts. Good for them. Um, it is one of three premier resorts <gasps> at Universal Studios. What are the other two, Ashley? My favorite hotel, Royal Pacific, and Hard Rock. Hard Rock, which is a partnership between Lowe's, Universal Studios, and the actual Hard Rock company. What a trifecta. Mm-hmm. And when you stay at a premier resort, any you know, of those three, you get unlimited universal express for the dry parks which is universal studios florida and universal's islands of adventure which is great because this allows you to skip the line of all those excessive wait times especially during spring break um or during any holiday seasons or just on a slow day like we got to experience which is pretty nice so we got to back to back to back hit up a couple of rides which is pretty cool and to plus i think the way that universal does their express with their resort guest and general like the ones they sell in park i think it's a great formula that they have oh, absolutely. i have never been upset over having to wait in line if i don't have express no and having express is is great no because i think the the team members and obviously the the corporate office have expressed down pat pretty well mm-hmm. so that you know ratio between regular and the express is is pretty down pat um but you also get my personal favorite is the early park admission so i get to get in we we i <laughs> you resort get to guest in, correct you get to get into the park an hour early before everybody else. And that is not just for a premiere. You also get that if you are staying at a, a value res- resort as well. So if you're staying at Dockside, a Cabana Bay, um, or Surfside, or many of their other hotels, you get that um, extra hour before everybody else. So you get to skip the line for a little bit when it comes to Hagrid's or Velocicoaster, which is tends to be my two that I run to when I stay mm-hmm. at those resorts. Or if I'm going over to studios, it's heading straight over to Mummy. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty nice. I do like that. Um, I also really love the fact that there is a water taxi and bus transportation because I myself obviously hate driving and I don't have to pay to park at City Walk because I'm already paying to park at my hotel. Mm -hmm. So I get all those extra amenities, which is pretty nice. And the boat and bus leave an hour after the park closes Um, or after City Walk closes. I'm sorry. So you get plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, And the thing I like most, so the water taxi I think is really cool um, because it's only available for four of the resorts. So it's available for the three premier resorts. Yep. And um, Sapphire Falls, Correct. which I can't remember what that one falls under. Is it a. It's a value. No, it's not value. Uh, it's higher than value. It's because Cabana Bay is a value, premier value. I don't remember, but I there's know it's, four, it's there's not, four levels. It's level three. Yeah, because I know it's it's the one right before you you get um, Express. It's one of the ones where they they fight that that persona whether or not that hotel should get express or whether or not it should be considered a value um another great thing about uh portofino bay is the mandara spa oh my gosh so this is the only resort on the campus that offers a spa and guests staying at any universal resort can go to the mandara spa they just have to make a booking ahead of time for spa treatments facials i mean they've got everything there as well so as the resorts we did not gym. have time to do this and that also it was very much sold out um well i mean For me, I would have paid the cost, but (laughs) (laughs) let somebody (laughs) give me a nice massage. I'll pay you for it. Um, But it was nice that 
that I like the fact though that you can book that with the front desk agent too, mm-hmm. or you can also do the text to t- that text with your your chat. Your, it's called chat, chat your, your service. service. Yeah, so you could be able to do that, which was pretty nice. However, was not happy that they were sold out, but good for that hotel that they were. Mm-hmm. They now also I just have need to concierge yes. at this resort, which is not something that all of the resorts at Universal have. No, so that's nice. Um, and then, do you want to talk about the next one? About their themed kids suites? I mean, I know some of this, but like I said, this was my first time. So I know that some of them are themed. I think it's themed after like so Minions. So Portofino Bay is Minions. They yeah. have Minions there. And it's really cool because the beds are like the little Rocket rockets ships. that the kids sleep in in the Why movie. Why didn't we sleep in those? Because we were not in a kid suite. That's ridiculous. You guys need to do better. But they do have the club level rooms, which um, are very nice. Mm-hmm. Very, very looking forward to needing to book one of those for my birthday. Um, that's What was that suite that we were talking about? The presidential suite? The I don't know if that's its formal name, but there, yeah, there is a really nice suite there oh that's gosh, like a massive. full suite. You get all these amenities that come into it. I, I feel like I need to just spend the six thousand dollars and i just I test tried, it out i tried to look online to see it but i didn't see like it available for booking no um so i don't i, I can't if it's i don't know all the details that you for have that to one. like call to book know. like it's not one of those that you can just book online i think it i wonder if you, you have, have to, celebrity status yeah. be a lot gotta or an, a gold amex <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, and then they also have one of the great things about this resort that all universal resorts have is they have full and I mean full room service. Oh, yeah. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. I think they even have overnight room service. Yeah, yeah. You could order um, a pizza at 2 a.m. It's beautiful. They have steak. They've got breakfast. Everything. They've got wine. All these things that you can be delivered to the room and they get delivered on the platter with the little yes. the little lid that comes off. We needed to spend more time so then I could have done that. But I really also appreciate this priority seating. Now, this is for all restaurants, not just at uh, City Select. Walk. Select restaurants, not all. I think it's all fine dining restaurants at City Walk. I just looked it up online. It well, says it. It literally it just says at um. What what is it? What did I just say? at select? It says at select restaurants in. I think the only one it doesn't do is Hard Rock and Bubba Gump's and Marty and Margaritaville because those aren't aren't universally owned. You don't get owned. priority seating at Circus McGurkis. Uh, well, Circus McGurkis is a fast, <laughs> quick service restaurant. You turd. Yes, they have your own little spot at Cafe Four just for you. <laughs> get your pizza rob would be over the moon um but i do know that you also you do get that at vivo big fire and twosomes i can speak for those three um and this allows you to kind of get it's almost like an express access to the restaurant so Mm -hmm. you do get a shorter wait time you're going to be the first one that is going to be seated compared to those that are just now getting on the wait list however do do, do you show like your room key you do yep however this does not get you to go ahead of those with a preset reservation so my recommendation recommendation on this is to still make your reservation because that guarantees you a spot at that time Mm -hmm. but priority seating just guarantees you to be ahead of those that are on the wait list interesting yes um so jumping very can we can we talk about this hotel though like yes i i did okay we do have to preference that portofino bay was going through a construction situation here (laughs) it was very heavily constructed but we were warned and um given a heads up prior to our booking and once we we did check in that they were Mm -hmm. like hey please pardon all of our i don't i know they don't call it pixie dust obviously because that's disney's thing but what's universal's is it just dust uh unit well i don't know if they use it at the resorts but it's a uh, set enhancement in progress because it's a movie sets yes. they did they did kind of you know give us a, a heads up but you know i didn't mind the fact that this was going on i do need to stay once again after the mm-hmm. construction is all done to kind of give a better i'm going to see a lot more things mm-hmm. but i still think it was pretty easy to get from point a to point b yeah like, I don't feel like the construction was too much in the way of everything. I mean, I don't think our view was as good as I, you, you anticipated with this. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think I had a struggle with getting my morning coffee or getting to our dinner reservation. Oh, we were right next to that Starbucks girl. Yeah, we were, which was so great. But like, I didn't, I don't feel like I, I was constricting on, on how to get to anything. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. very simple and very clear cut. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and to preface, so Portofino Bay opened in the 90s. I don't remember exactly when in the 90s. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, she either is or she's very close to 30 years old. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, she definitely needs to be brought into the 21st <laughs> 21st century. Um, I mean, even like their hotel buttons and the lights on the elevator, like those are the old incandescent lights and everything. But it fits so well because it is a recreation of the real Portofino Bay in Italy. Yeah, it was really um, pretty. Yeah. And that that bay that oh, it's just the bay is 
beautiful and I love it. The bay. But okay, so let's talk about Oh, is that the spot where, where we were sitting? The piazza. The piazza. Yes. Yeah. Oh, with the boats that I, I really wanted to get into. But you did not. <sighs> You'd have stepped in that water and you would have slid right down that concrete and the algae. And I would have laughed. Probably. Um so I want to talk about there's a restaurant there that I have never eaten at before. I've stayed there once before and then I've I've uh, resort hopped, as they call it, where mm-hmm. you just kind of go and experience it. Um, but there is a place called Mama Della's mm. Restaurante. Yes. And it is one of the fine dining establishments there. Right. Now, they don't have like a dress code or anything. There is another res- uh, restaurant we'll talk about in a minute that does. Um, but it is considered fine dining mm-hmm. where you, when you go into the restaurant, you go into Mama Della's home. Oh and gosh. this restaurant looks just like an actual home. Like yeah. there's different rooms. And I, the thing I love about it is it's not formal dining in the sense of the chairs and the tables when you go in every table in there is a different type of table every chair Mm -hmm. is a different type of chair almost as if those chairs had been thrifted from old antique shops across the bay of portofino and that is the furniture that mama has in her home yeah i think it kind of vibes with that like it matches the the whole aesthetic of i'm in my house because i remember growing up as a kid my furniture and my dining room never matched Mm -hmm. like my parents had different pieces of furniture in their living room and my grandmother's house was the exact same way so it was kind of nice to like oh this is kind of feels like homey like i'm getting like yeah grandma's cooking hanging out here in in these funky chairs i mean the table we sat at two of the chairs didn't match and then we had a booth on the side so Mm -hmm. I, I kind of appreciated the fact that this was kind of just a little like, yes, it was fine dining. I very much felt like, I mean, there was numerous forks. It was, it was, you know, the, the servers were wearing ties and suits. It was, it was very high class. However, it was kind of like high class laid back class. Mm-hmm. It was good. It was very thematic. Yeah. And one of the things that is the coolest part about Mama Della's is they actually have singers oh. that stroll through the restaurant and serenade you to live music and there's no cost for it. It's no. it's a part of that oh. experience I love it. of Mama Della's. I love it. And I love that they weren't just singing like Italian opera music. Mm-hmm. They were singing like modern music as well. Like What they was they of... sung Happy Birthday to yes. a couple tables? What was one of the songs? Oh gosh. They sang so many. I'm trying to think. I can't think of the name of any of the songs right now because one of them was a song that we knew. We're like, wait a minute. That's not Italian music. But it was kind of neat. It was kind of nice. Um... I did really, really love our server, though. I really did. Like, I can't remember his name, and I'm so sorry. I feel so so bad that I cannot. But I thought he was so good. Like, we all know when it comes to restaurants, they're 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 my pride and joy. I love mm-hmm. being at restaurants. You yeah, guys you have got a huge background in it. I do. I do, I really do. Um. So when we go out to eat, especially at those places, I tend to kind of take, I don't want to say like control, but like I take a lead when it comes to that. And I critique very, very aggressively. And this man kept up with me, dude. Like he was like in the same vibe as I was. He was in the same mood that I was. It was great. He was able to to meet up with our comment, like with what we were looking for. He mm-hmm. was able to, to, I felt like we didn't wait very long for our food. Everything came out piping hot, which was, if it needed to be hot, it was hot. If it needed to be cold, it was cold. Um, I felt like we were never sitting there waiting longer than two minutes for refills. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like he did very, very well for, for that service. Yeah. And so while we were there, I had, I'm going to try to say all of this stuff properly, but it's going to be a struggle. The Ensalada Mamadella, uh-huh. which was dressing, which uh, was mixed green or it was that was the dressing. Mm-hmm. OK, so that was the dressing, mixed greens, bell peppers, carrots, cherry tomatoes, which I picked off I and a balsamic them. vinaigrette. Yes, it was so delicious. Good. Oh my gosh, I so good. like I am really weird when it comes to vinaigrettes, but I was like, I'm going to try this one. I'm not a huge fan of dark vinaigrettes, but I'm going to try. That was the best salad Ever. On par, that beat out the salad that we talked about earlier in our seasons that I had at Ancient Lore Village. No shame on Ancient Lore Village. That is a delicious salad. It's a, but a, a, that dressing. It, that was one of the best salads I have ever had. I may have had. to go back just for that salad. And go lunch. Yeah. I'm here for Just for, for the salad. Um, I had my, uh, they gave us, uh, they had an option of uh, a take on a caprese salad. However, it wasn't your typical caprese. It was a burrata caprese and it was sitting on the thickest piece of delicious Italian bread I've ever had. That was really good. Oh my God. It was so good. And it it was good. The amount of balsamic that was glazed all over that bowl. I could have put like, if it wasn't for the fact that the servers were 
staring at me and people were in that room, I would have licked that bowl head clean. It was so good. Uh, yeah. And the thing I liked about my salad is it was gluten free, mm-hmm. which I am no longer gluten free. I'll <laughs> fill you all in next episode and we have a life update. Um, we need to do a life update. <laughs> and it was fully vegetarian. Yeah. Um, and those the, the only reason I brought that up is that they like advertise that in their menu. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, that was really delicious. And then for my main course, or did you have any... Do you have anything else with your appetizer? I had, yeah, I had your a wine. delicious, a delicious ga- glass of... Um, Gas. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I had a delicious glass of Cabernet. Um, it was their house Cabernet, which he was like, this isn't just house Cabernet. Like, you're going to love this. And he did. It was a little on the sweet side and a little on the dry side. So it was a nice combination of both. And it paired beautifully with that appetizer. Mm-hmm. So it was great. I was really, really happy with it. Yeah. Um, oh, and the bread. Wait. Oh, yeah. We have to talk about the bread. I love the fact that not just did they bring out this massive piece of bread, like a loaf of bread, but they also brought out these delicious little garlic sticks. Yeah. And then they brought out a whole bowl of roasted garlic, and I was just so here for it. And while we're here in this fancy restaurant, dressed all nice, (laughs) I pick up one of those garlic sticks, and I hold it, and I look at your brother, and I go, Avada (laughs) Kedavra! I was like, I don't know him. It's the intrusive thought every male has when they pick up any form of stick. Or anything that is long, we just, we have to do it. No, we don't have to, but sure. We have to. It was a TikTok trend, and now that we will do it for the rest of our world. It's a pop culture Lord. reference. And, you know, you, Harry Potter is a part of Universal, so it fit. Um, but for my main course, I had, um, I looked at several different ones, and I, I, I really wanted to try something new. But then I thought, they have spaghetti and meatballs. And it was a, a, a ground beef brisket uh, meatballs with marinara and sauce. And let me tell you, it was so good. It smelled delicious. It was. I was just like, I'm going to be stereotypical and I'm going to get the spaghetti and meatballs at an Italian restaurant. Uh, and it was really good. And I enjoyed it. It was. It smelled delicious. And I had a little bit of leftovers and I accidentally left them in the fridge when we checked out. And I feel really bad. I'm sad for you. I'm sad for me. I had their fantastic veal piccata. I love piccata. Like, I'm a big fan of chicken piccata. I'm a big fan of veal piccata. I just, I love lemon and capers. And capers mm-hmm. are like, how did I describe it to you? Like little salty, little, little circles. And little I salty just, circles. I just love them. Because like, I, I was like, them. is that like fish eggs or something? No, they're just like, I don't know. I it really was very don't know salty. what they are. I, the, the meal itself was good, but it was a little too salty for me. Oh, I God, think the I capers it. just was uh, too much of a bite for me i don't think i'm a caper fan loved it and then i paired so beautifully with a sauvignon blanc um which is what they recommended uh our server actually recommended it for me and it paired beautifully i loved it yeah and rob and his fettuccine alfredo yep that whole bowl was gone Mm -hmm. that thing disappeared i don't remember what jordan got i don't remember either was it lasagna I don't know. No, the chicken parm. Oh, yeah, the he chicken parm. He got the chicken parm. I forgot. Which they didn't call it chicken parm. It had a more fancy Parmigina. name. Parmigina. Parmigina, yeah. Parmigina. Um, but that was, it was fun. We went yes. at about nine o'clock. Um, so we kind of went after the dinner rush. We did. It um, was nice. It wasn't super busy. It was yeah. very quiet. Because we also got there as a big party was leaving. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. So um, it was good. We had a fun time. Mm-hmm. Um, the bill was a I wouldn't say it was a bit high. It was But high. it was, it's more, it is a fine dining establishment. So yeah. it's not a quick service. It's not, uh, you know, Olive Garden. If you've been to Vivo on City Walk property, I would I would compare the two of the prices being the same. Okay. I, I would say they're relatively close to that. Even if you've been to Big Fire or Tucson, I would say that's pretty much on the same range mm-hmm. as this establishment. And I'll say we didn't have any children in our group, but I did see several families in there. Did, family, yeah. fam- uh, several families I with children. I did notice that the, the mama, uh, mama had a kids menu option on there. Oh, she so did? that was oh, pretty okay. nice. It was, it consisted of uh, spaghetti and meatballs. It consisted of a uh, chicken parm and a fettuccine Alfredo. So okay. Was, so and a children, buttered children, children sizes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think okay. that was pretty nice that she was able to, which makes sense for me because of the fact that you are going into mama's house. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that mama would have options for, for just about anybody but I, you know what i really loved that there was only two pages in the menu yeah it was very clear cut very simple it wasn't overwhelming it was here's an appetizer if you want it or a salad or they had minestrone soup which we need to go back because i want to try and then here's your entrees 
and that was it. And then like they had a book, they had a little dessert. I think it was tiramisu and something else was a, was a dessert option. And then, and I'll go like a wine a list wine, yeah. and a cocktail list. And that was it. And you're like, this is so beautiful. Like, I feel like more restaurants should be like this. I cannot stand it when you walk into restaurants and it's like, here's a 15 page menu. Have at it. This, yeah. It's just so much. It just, it's overwhelming. So it's a lot. we're going to continue to talk about Mama Della's for just a moment. Um, there is another restaurant at Portofino Bay and it was my absolute favorite the last time I stayed there because it's where I went to breakfast. Yes. Um, now this restaurant is currently closed. It yes, is it the, is. I can't pronounce Vice. that. Tar, tar. Oh, oh, tar, uh, tatro, tratatoro? Tratatora? I think Del so. Del Porto? I yes, think it might be that. that. Yep. Um, which is considered a casual full service restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, it's family friendly fare with a touch of Italian. Oh. Um, their menu looks so good. That is where they also typically hold the breakfast, breakfast buffet. buffet. Yeah. Um, or you can order a la carte. Well, it is closed as a part of its remodel. So yes. Mama Della's is hosting the breakfast buffet right oh. now. So I was so happy when I realized that they still had the breakfast buffet mm-hmm. and it was at Mama Della's and it was all the same foods yeah. um, that you would get if the at the other restaurant. So we went back the next morning for breakfast. Again, oh. server, fan. Oh my God, he was great. And when he learned that we were just locals here on a staycation, we weren't treated any differently nope. than people who travel from around the world to go eat there. Um, as a matter of fact, we actually had several conversations with him about yeah. our favorite things here in this area. Well, and he also recommended a couple things that we had never done at because we were headed to Volcano Bay the next day. So it was kind of nice that like he was giving us recommendations on what to do and what not to do because he was also a local that has done all these things. So that we was We were heading nice. to Volcano Bay that day. Yes. Um, but then he gave us fresh squeezed orange juice oh, and coffee and water and he was just it, it was really great service oh, really yeah. good service no, i highly recommend that buffet that was fantastic and the lady who made my omelet <laughs> oh my gosh i as many know um i'm not eating very much meat right now except for chicken if that so it was so great to me that she was like oh you want every single cheese option and every single meat or every single veggie option Okay, let me feel. You should have seen this omelet. I wish I took a picture, but I was so hungry. <laughs> Just scarfed the whole thing down. But it was huge. And I thought the price of that was relatively inexpensive, too. It came out to what, $32 per person for the buffet? $30, $30? Uh, I believe I think so. it was 30 between 30 and 35 let's go with that as a nice little range just Maybe. in case I don't remember but I thought it was so good um, they had it was. like scrambled eggs and potatoes and bacon and sausage they had watermelon, watermelon. juice they had parfaits. an entire fruit section too and the yogurts yep yogurts you can make your own little yogurts meal, and grits fresh fruit yep I thought biscuits, it was great. Biscuits and gravy. And oh. I like, I am an Appalachian boy and yes. I like my biscuits and gravy. We make them with bacon grease and sausage grease and they're delicious. This is not how they make theirs, I don't think. It has a very distinct and different flavor than what I'm used to in Appalachia, but it's still so good. I and I love the flavor to it. It was so soft. It was great. I was a big I love fan. The breakfast. Um, so at Univer- so at Portofino Bay, one of the great things about this that we hadn't mentioned is all of these restaurants that we're talking about, they are all just within a stone's throw of the piazza. Yeah. Most of them are on the piazza, which is just this large area around the center of the resort that is at the bay. Um, and we'll talk more about what happens on the piazza throughout the year. Um, but as you wrap around the piazza, there's also a Starbucks, yes. um, which we went into. And that was one of the most delicious peppermint white mochas with mm-hmm. oat milk and no whipped cream that I have had in a long time. I just um, love them. I don't always get Starbucks. Like my hotel, one of my hotels obviously serves it, but it's not, it's an affiliate of Starbucks. So it's not a full Starbucks. So I kind of miss oh, the, like, is. yeah, we don't get like any extra stuff. Like I can't get a brown sugar shake and espresso with mm-hmm. cold foam on top, which is if you know, you know, that's my go-to. Mm-hmm. I will be so sad if they ever get rid of that. I'll be like, I don't know what to order anymore. Yeah. Um, but you know what I did really like? Well, I was going to talk uh, the the place inside the Starbucks as well. Oh, the gelato place. Yeah, the gelato yes. gel, gelatateria. Yeah. Which is a quick service restaurant that serves artisan gelato, milkshakes, smoothies, biscottis, coffee, and espresso. I love that she let us the cast or the team member there let us try those samples too. She did, and it was it was delicious and oh, it was good. We got to go back. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about Bice? Do I want to talk about Bice? Yes, I would love to talk about Bice. So Bice is um, a fine dining dress code report uh, resort 
or business casual attire. So they will look at you and tell you that if you are wearing a t-shirt and shorts, you are not allowed to come into that restaurant. We got to say its legal name. Oh, the Bice Ressontore. Yes. Yes. Which I will say on the Universal Mobile app, it sa- it does say that uh, resort or business casual attire is recommended. Mm. So I don't know what that, I don't know. Don't there. show up. Not looking nice. But That's yeah, it is say. a very nice restaurant. Correct. Now, this began in 1926 as a small... Trattoria in Milan. No, it's Trattoria. Trattoria in Milan, which is now the international network of Bice. Now, it offers a northern Italian cuisine and a superb service and an excellent and elegant atmosphere. Have you seen this menu? I ha- I didn't even know this restaurant existed until this day. Okay. So Cuz it's in a part of the resort that I never go to. Okay. So we went you you left the resort for for a tad bit mm-hmm. and we went over to the Thirsty Fish which we will get into next. But you have to pass this restaurant in order to get to the Thirsty Fish. Each table has its own little like candle and like white linen was on top of this mm-hmm. and it was like the waiters had like napkins over their arms and it was like they're wearing suit jackets and i'm just like i want to eat there by myself alone in an elegant silk dress <laughs> i want to drink a whole bottle of wine it was so beautiful and it was like they had those um you know the italian like big candles that are like in wine bottles yeah. and they're like overflowing that was sitting on the tables oh nice it was so pretty like you just passing by it looked pretty and it smelled so good i just i need to eat there now (laughs) yeah so i am sad because one thing that i didn't get to do while we were there and it's my favorite thing to do when i go to portofino even if i'm not staying there is get an espresso martini from the thirsty fish oh we went to the thirsty fish and if you have not been even if you're not staying at portofino i recommend that you pop over there and get a drink and sit outside in the piazza or even just sit inside of the thirsty fish Because this was such a fun experience. When we went, the singers that were that were in Mamas Mm -hmm. were getting a drink at the Thirsty Fish, Mm -hmm. so they were singing inside the Thirsty Fish. It was so cute. They're like, and we were talking to the bartenders who were wonderful, and he was like, "Yeah, they do this every night. Like literally, we get live music every single night, and it's not on purpose, and Mm -hmm. it is so good. But it's it's fantastic. It's like upscale meets." downscale a downtown kind of vibe Mm -hmm. and it's like laid back but it's it's like higher end at the same time it's really nice when there's no construction going on because there is construction actually happening to the outside of the building that that is in all of the doors and windows in the thirsty fish are open and there's tables sitting outside and inside so you can sit on the piazza and you can watch the the water taxis come and go while you drink and socialize it's a it's a fun it was really nice because we got to we got to get a nice little uh night cap and we we sat on the piazza and as it was dark and they had like lights everywhere and it was really pretty and we got to hear the water and that's when i actively wanted to get in one of those boats yeah now one place you did not go while you were here and this is where somewhere i have eaten before is sal's market deli Mm -hmm. which is a quick service restaurant is this the one that was right next door to the mama delas no it was it was uh mama delas and then the stairs to the lobby and then then the, the south okay yep so this is more like what people are used to in, in resorts is the grab and go place. Yeah. It's not a it's not a uh, quick service or a cafeteria, um, but they do um, pizzas, mm-hmm. sandwiches, salads, meats, cheeses, fruits, and then they have like your grab and go. So you can buy beer and wine. You can buy pop tarts. You can buy cup of noodle type things in there. So it's kind of like a convenience store and a pizza place and Their there is dining so there is good. dining in there though but it's very limited it was i wouldn't say it's like a full sit down place it's yeah i think there's one of those like places that you i think there's like go. 10 menu items in total and that includes like all the pizzas you can buy all the sandwiches and there's probably about 10 tables um i feel like it's more so take it with i've me never to my been room. i've never been in the dining portion that they have because mm. it's that little separate room i've never actually been in there so i have no clue how big it is but i want to say i really loved when we rounded the corner and we saw the fam those three girls sitting inside eating and that one girl was she just took a big old bite of that sandwich dude like she it was her whole personality trait she was like let me just home <laughs> it was and it was <laughs> It was I just really felt funny. so bad for her because there's this window where all these people are walking past, and this poor girl just like Chowing ate her down. body weight in that sandwich bite. 
I bet you that's what you and I look like, though, after we eat a, like, somebody videotape us at Mama, Mama, Mama Della's. Della's. Mama Della's. Yeah, we'd be screwed. And then do you want to talk about the last last food establishment we that's, have? That's uh, Splendido's, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Splendido's Bar and Grill is a full service and bar. This offers appetizers, pizza, salad, sandwiches, wraps, tacos, um, Platters. Platters? I don't know why the seven's in the notes. That was a mistake. Like you could get like, like a seven chicken. seven platters. You can There's get like a seven ch- different platter options, kids. You can get like a chicken tender platter, like oh, big platters that can nice. feed a family. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, seven platters, seven people makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't know where this one's located though. Um, I think it's over near is this by the, pool? Uh, the beach pool. Well, there's three Got different it. pool locations at this resort. I think they have the most pools, which we're about to get into. But I think it's over next to beach pool, which is the one that has the big water slide. Mm. Uh, and it's like the family yeah. hangout place. Rob and I walked over to the villa pool and this one has the hot tub and it has a TV that you could like, they were playing movies on. They were playing alien versus monsters on this TV and it was super cute to watch. Um, there should have been the beach pool. No, no, no. We saw the villa pool. It was massive, oh. huge. She said it was the biggest one, and villa is the biggest one on property. It was. It's over there by the. Oh, I, the kn- I didn't know they did movies over there. Yeah, it's got a massive projection screen over there. It's so cute, and they offer like different waters and stuff that you can get complimentary, mm-hmm. and they have um san- sunscreen and tanning lotion complimentary as well. Yeah. I did not know that. To preface, so there are three pool locations, sorry, and what's I'm great is they're <laughs> all they're all very different. So you've got the beach pool, which is kind of like the family pool. That's mm-hmm. one that has the water slide. It has a sandy beach. Um, that's where they do a lot of games, activities. That's where I know of them to typically stream movies. It sounds like they were streaming a movie at uh, Villa that day too. Yeah. Um, the Villa pools are a little more... I felt like this was more like adult vibe. Uh, it's it's the ha- happy medium. Yeah. It's the place that has the hot tub. Correct. But they also have rentable cabanas in mm-hmm. the Villa pool area where you can get a fan, refrigerators, a phone, a plasma TV, um, they have more upgraded lounge chairs oh just God, out on so the lawn. Pretty. And it's also, I think I already said, it's where they have the hot tub. And then there's Hillside Pool, which I've never been to. And Portofino Bay markets this as a quiet and secluded place to relax. Yes, this is not one of those ones that you go in there making a lot of noise. And from what I was told from the lady, she said that Hillside, there was a, t- a, c- a team member that we were speaking to Rob as Rob was watching the movie. Um, and she was like, if you're looking for quiet, away from I think she assumed that Rob was my child she was like if you're looking for quiet away from your kid she was like go to Hillside I was like why what is that she's like there's literally team members over there that would be like hi you're being too loud you gotta go or be quiet I was like no way look at that I want that that job give me that job telling a whole bunch of children hi crotch goblins quiet be quiet this is the quiet place. Yes. Um, and there's lots of shopping. Yes, but I like that it was not like an overwhelming shopping experience. Mm-hmm. Like they had the Universal store. Mm-hmm. Um, then they also had, there was a beach store right across from uh, the Thirsty Fish, which had like some, some, I feel like this was kind of like the Portofino shop. So there's four stores located in Portofino on the Piazza. Mm. There's Altamoda, mm-hmm. La Ancora. Sure. Which I think is supposed to be like the anchor. La um, Memories di Portofino. <laughs> and obviously the Universal Store. But I love how they call it Uni Store. I called it Uni Store. Oh, I thought that's what it was. <laughs> no, I abbreviated it to the Uni Store, U N I, which is what a lot of Orlando locals will do instead of saying Universal, they'll call it Uni. Yes, because we're all very lazy. Yes. Um, so no, it's the Universal Store. We literally have a nickname for everything. Because we refuse just to call anything by their actual name. Mm-hmm. Velocity now, instead of Velocicoaster. Here. We could do a whole episode on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Stop. Um, so the free amenities for this place do not stop with everything that we've been talking about. Obviously, not even close. food and beverage and shopping is not free. But one of the most amazing things that I think sets this resort apart from any resort that we have at Universal is the Musica della Nota which is each evening at sunset. The Harbor Piazza comes to life with co- a complimentary showcase of classic opera and popra favorites sung by talented performers. And this is done for free. Usually it's done on the balcony that faces... So like if they're in the lobby of Portofino Bay, they come out onto a balcony over the piazza and sing to you and the sun is fading behind you. And they're on this balcony and it's beautiful. 
right now with the construction, they have been relocated just down to the piazza, and it looks like they were near the harbor line next to um, the fish, the salty fish. Thirsty fish. Thirsty fish, thank you. Um, and I didn't get to see it because uh, we were at dinner, or we were going to dinner, so we'd missed it. Um, but it is so cool, um, and I absolutely, absolutely love that. I've never seen it, so now we have to go back. Oh, most definitely. Um, And then, um, obviously, that doesn't always happen every single night. It depends on if the performers are available and what the weather is like. True. Uh, And then another really cool thing that happens on the Piazza is called Harbor Nights. Have you ever heard of this? No, I haven't. Tell me. So Harbor Nights is a special event nights that happen on the Piazza. So like New Year's, I know, is one they have every year. And then they do a couple of different events throughout the year. Um, it is a separate ticketed event, so you can still get around the piazza and you can get to the restaurants and stuff, but in order to get into Harbor Nights, um, it is a ticket a ticketed event that ranges from $79 for uh, Standing Harbor, $109 for VIP, and $850 for a private table that includes reserved seating for up to 10 people at a private table for your entire party. Wow. Um, and there's music. There's all sorts of... I mean, when I first moved to Orlando, that was one of the things that I heard about when it comes to the resorts at Universal is Harbor Nights parties. That's so cool. We're and people to dress to the nines. They're in evening gowns, suits. They're, I mean, they're wearing, I can't think of a good brand right now. Gucci. They're wearing Gucci and Dolce and & Cabana. And I mean, it is legitimately like you're in LA at a party. Love that. And it's pretty cool. I love that. They also do weddings. Oh, really? Tell me all about those. <laughs> She's like, I didn't read that note. No, um, actually, I just don't. I'm... <laughs> My thoughts on weddings are... So valid. you go ahead and talk about weddings. Um, So Mediterranean is your experience (laughs) at a stunning recreation of a seaside villa of Portofino, Italy. At Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel, you can expect an exceptional wedding experience surrounded by unparalleled beauty, elegance, and romance on the Italian Riviera. Um, So again, it's like it's out there on the piazza for the most part. Um, and they do weddings and private events. They also have a convention and conference space on the other side of the resort that has its own separate entrance into the resort. Um, so they have ballrooms, escalators that go down, some beautiful artwork down there. And they've got several large ballrooms and conference spaces that they can hold events at, which is pretty cool. Happy for those people. Woo. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did, as we, we spoke about um, in the episode about, well, in this episode, is the, all the construction that Portofino has been going under. Um, they're looking to to do some, you could kind of tell there was some outside updating that was happening. It looks like they were painting, mm-hmm. reconstructing some things. Um, so the resort was built in the 90s, which makes sense as to why we're seeing all of this construction. I think mm-hmm. they're, they're looking to kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit here, update, you know, what's going on. Well, you got to think Epic's opening soon. Yes. So we're going to, you're going to see a huge spike in attendance at oh, Universal. Absolutely. So it did take a while for us to get where we wanted to. However, you were still able to rock around the piazza, was, was, which was nice. Mm-hmm. And you, I felt like we were able to still get, like I said, from point A to point B. So I yeah. don't think any of the construction was necessarily in the way. However, it did. The you only, had to detour. Yeah. And I do think it kind of takes away from like the look of the hotel. Portofino is very beautiful when mm-hmm. it is not under construction. So this is just kind of, it's definitely one of those ones as it was my first day that I do need to stay there again mm-hmm. be- after the construction is there. So I can fully appreciate all of the fact that I don't have to rock around some staffling. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention there is also a VIP lounge in the lobby. I did see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to become VIP members so we can sit in there. I don't know how that happens, but we can. Yeah. Hey, Universal, make us VIP people. Hey, do you want to talk about the... Um, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into this, can we talk about how comf- how the, that room was, please? Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about our room. No, we need to talk about that first. I know we. this is a very important thing and I want you to talk about it. However, that was probably one of the most beautiful rooms I've stayed in mm-hmm. in a while. That bathroom. Oh, I could have lived in that bathroom. Yeah. So we had a reservation for a garden view room. Yes. Um, so it overlooked the garden. Um, Which is kind of the piazza. No, no, no. No? Hmm. Is there a piazza view? It's called Harbor View. Oh, a Harbor View. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Um, so we had two... Kings? Kings. Was it, were they king yeah. size? 
I they had to be. They were huge. I don't remember if they're king or queen. I, I have know. a feeling they're king because I feel like we were in smaller. We were on a smaller bed when we changed resorts. Yeah, definitely. Smaller. Um, but it comes. It had mini fridge, TV. Yep. Um, desk. But the bathroom alone. Carpeted, which I loved. Yes, it had a safe for for any of your valuables, which was nice. It had an ironing board. The bathroom was about as big as, as a, the room as a like standard hotel room yeah it was huge i mean it had a bathtub which was nice i had double sinks a toilet and it also had a shower um it also came with a whole bunch of towels and a full-size mirror was on the back of the door also came with your amenities of shampoo conditioner body wash lotion shower cap shower cap cotton um, swabs gloves, ear, ear things ear cotton what are those called ear ear i don't know i just forgot what they were called ear ear cleaners no Cotton, I thought they were cotton swabs. No. Maybe it is. Cotton, no, cotton swabs, cotton pads. Cotton pads. Cotton um, balls. <laughs> they had, there's a, uh, two glasses in the bathroom yes. for when you brush your teeth and you have a little rinse. Yeah, that was really nice. Um, and they give you like a little paper plate yep. that you can set your jewelry or your cup yeah, and stuff on. Yeah, I put all my earrings on there, which is nice. And I want to take a second to talk about the chat your service that Universal oh, has that was so at their resort. So upon check-in, um, they send a welcome text message to the phone number registered to the person who had the reservation. So However, it was for I me. I did find out, though, that you can add phone numbers to that. You can. Yeah. Um, you can change the phone number, do whatever you want. So they send you a welcome text message and welcome, say, um, if you want to accept yes... Or if you if you respond and say yes, they send you a link that'll give you all the information about the resort, the restaurants, and all of these things. Literally, and right then there they at your tell fingertips. you that you can text this phone number twenty four seven while Literally. you're there mm-hmm. um, for anything that you need. So we actively used that service because we wanted an extra blanket. Their blankets were fantastic, by oh, the way. Ten out of ten. So we text them at like eleven o'clock at night, and we said, "Hey, can we get an extra blanket to our room?" And um, I had two different agents respond so one agent responded and they said yes uh, we'll send that right up and i said thank you and after i said thank you another agent followed up and asked if there was anything else that they could assist us with for that night and i just i think it was great and i think it was a lot of fun and i really enjoyed that oh my god it was fantastic i love that like i loved it and those blankets i need them universal please sell portofino's blankets to me please and thank you okay so we check out we -hmm. finished breakfast we check out yep Jordan and I head to my house because we have to check on baby B. Mm-hmm. And you head home, but you didn't head home. No. Do you? Do you want to? Do- what happened, Ashley? <laughs> what happened to your car? Oh, that was not what I wanted. <laughs> so I. Nice little- dent in your car i was parked in a compact car parking spot because i have a compact car you no you don't have a compact car you have a two-person <laughs> smart, a smart car, car. so it is a, it looks is, like a go it is a compact car it's a go car um your mic's <laughs> cutting out i think um i'm okay and i get out on the main road with you and jordan and i'm looking at you guys at a red light i go through the red light and i look in my rearview mirror to change lanes and i realize i don't see my driver's rearview mirror that's and I focused weird. for a second and I realized that my mirror had been folded in and I didn't notice it while I was in the garage. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm immediately like, oh, no, because there was a large SUV that parked in a compact parking spot, Idiot. clearly marked Idiot. beside me. And evidently in the morning when they went to check out, they I don't know how my mirror got pushed in because there was no damage there. But just behind my driver's side door is a big, huge dent the size of a basketball. And they ingrate like it dig dug into the car and scratched up my paint. Um, And I didn't realize I didn't realize the dent until I'd made it to my destination. Mm. So I got out, did what I needed to do. And I told, called you guys and said, I, you know, I'll catch up with you. I'm going to head back to Portofino just so I can update them on the situation and get a report done uh, in case I decide to fix this. I'll need it for insurance purposes. So I went back to Portofino and I have to commend the staff there. So I walked inside and I was greeted by um, their lobby person. They kind of have someone that fro- floats around the lobby. Um, I let him know that I needed to speak with security due to a vehicle accident happened in the parking garage. He first and foremost asked if I was okay, if I was involved. You know, I told him I was, but it wasn't necessarily a car wreck. 
Um, and he asked again if I was okay. And then he walked me over to the front desk um, where I had a front desk assist me. I just let him know. I said, hey, I need to speak with security. And she was like, can I ask what it's for? And I said, yeah, um, my car got hit in the parking lot overnight. And um, I just need to do a report on it. So she was like, yeah, let me let me, you know, take care of that for you. She said, do you mind if I step to the back and notify my manager of the situation? And I said, absolutely. That's fine. So she walked to the back. She came back out a few moments later with a water bottle and said that her manager wanted me to have a water bottle. Um, And then her manager came out a moment later. Um, They all asked if I was okay. I felt like I was royalty in this moment. They were so nice and so kind to me. And I understand it because, you know, we pay a lot of money to stay in places like this. Um, And something like that is not something that you want to happen when you're on vacation. But Mm -mm. say la vie is the world. Um, It happened. It wasn't anyone at Portofino's fault. Um, You know, it's a parking garage. Vehicles are moving. It's what happens. Was I upset? Absolutely. Was it Universal or Portofino's fault? Absolutely not. Um, so Don't park in compact cars unless um, you're a compact I waited a little while for security to come, and he came, and we chatted in the lobby for a moment. We walked out, looked at the car. He took my registration and insurance information, uh, gave me some resources that I could use for um, the Orlando Police Department if I wanted a formal uh, police report done um, and things, and he took my information, and you know, he, he said he was grateful that I myself was okay. Um, and that I think that really speaks volumes to me um, to know that when you park in a parking garage and self park, it is considered um, at risk parking. Did you park anywhere in a parking garage? Um, and I feel as though they definitely went the extra mile to make sure I was taken care of and that I felt uh, appreciated by them. And I think they did a fantastic job. And whoever hit my car in the parking garage, you're a duty head. You suck. Um, didn't even leave a note in my windshield to say you're sorry. I don't care if you would have left your driver's information and insurance information. If you'd have just left a note that said you were sorry, it, it, I, it would have been better, but it is what it is. Do better. Um, so we did Universal the day before. Mm-hmm. So checked out a Portofino, did what we need to do. And then we met up at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort for our second leg of our journey. Yes, we did. Um, and um, Cabana Bay Beach Resort is a prime value resort. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be on the second of the four levels. So we're two below the premier resorts. Um, mm-hmm. And it is uh, within walking distance of Volcano Bay, which is mm-hmm. pretty neat. Uh, but the thing I like most about it is it is a vibrant retro style place. They have family suites. They've got standard hotel type rooms. They've got pools, all sorts of stuff. But the resort is mimics a florida beach resort of the 1950s or 60s do you know i heard the best thing to describe this hotel it is like hairspray the movie threw up in this hotel i can see that hey mama welcome to the it's like that and like fallout before the bombs drop i have never seen it so you're obsessed well i have to say that because the the fallout series released like two days ago um welcome to the 50s is it the 50s or 60s it's I, the 60s. Oh, well. But stop singing before we get a cease and desist. <laughs> John Travolta will come after me. Yeah. So we didn't really participate in a lot of the amenities at the resort for this day because our, uh, at this point. All day at Volcano Bay. We did. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how long we stayed at Volcano Bay. Um, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So in Port, uh, in Portofino, in Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort, which we are just going to refer to as Cabana Bay <laughs> moving forward. Yes, we will not be saying um, entirely large. They have their newest addition is the Shakes Malt Shop where you can get milkshakes and ice cream and you can get adult milkshakes. Mm-hmm. Filled um, with booze. They have. We did not participate in this, and I'm very sad we did not. I know we looked at doing it, and we thought about doing it that night, but we ran out of time because they closed before we got back to the hotel. Correct. Um, they have Bayliner Diner, mm-hmm. which is a quick service style cafeteria, so it's like a food court. Yep. Um, so you go in. There's several different locations with different types of food that you can um, get. You meet up at the registers, pay. The dining area for this place is massive. It's like a cafeteria. Um, like a school lunchroom cafeteria size it's, it's huge oh yeah size like wise, in the size yeah. Wise, yeah that's what i'm saying it's massively but i love huge. like the architecture because they've got like the round tables and then they have you know square tables and booths the, the tvs that were playing all over the place they had like black and white movies that were playing they're just projectors but like of cartoons I yeah and they played like 1950s commercials yeah. and cartoons yeah that was cute um it's massive. i like that they have the hideaway bar and grill mm-hmm. um which is out by the pools you yes can... we we jordan and i participated in this that's usually where i get my pina colada but i didn't get one this a day pina colada if you like 
piña colada. And he thinks I'm going to get the cease and assist. <laughs> Lord. Um, I also... Like- was that song... Was that song by Jimmy Buffett? I have no idea. Because if so, then we won't get a cease and desist. Oh, rip. No, I just meant because he, oh, he was wild rip. and crazy, not because he's dead. <laughs> There's also Atomic Tonic, uh, Galaxy Bowling, which we have participated in in the past. Um, Swizzle Lounge, which is very adorable. And they also have live music that plays at this um, at night. Mm-hmm. Um, they also have a Starbucks. And they have their room delivery pizza place, which is called D. Delicioso. Delicioso pizza. Delicioso pizza. Love it. Um, it is the same pizza that they serve in the Bayliner Diner, too. Yes, it is. Now, um, that's it. Because we didn't really spend we any there. No, time we got to talk there. about the room. So we stayed in one of the towers. Yes, we did. Um, we and had a towers, really pretty view of Volcano Bay. The towers were an addition to the resort after the resort opened. Correct. Um, and these are... I think these opened around the same time Volcano Bay opened. They they opened... They started construction when... Volcano Bay was When Wet and Wild closed. Yes. Because Wet and Wild used yep. to be where Volcano Bay is and now. And I think the whole purpose of this of these two towers being built was so that you could get the view of Volcano Bay. Yeah. Yeah. And we had an incredible view. It was. It was very nice. Um, two queen, or it was two queen beds. Yes. Uh, TV, mini fridge, table, uh, smaller bathroom yeah, than Portofino. Tiny. However, was... you know what I did like about this bathroom was the fact that the shower and the bathroom were closed door and then there's a separate area f- that had the sink and the mirror to get ready now the family suites nice. there those are my favorites because when you go into a family suite you walk in and you're in the kitchenette oh very nice you turn left and you have a formal living room oh, with nice. a, a couch that actually pulls out into a sleeper sofa and then you have this really cool wall with a sliding door mm. behind that door there is two beds and then there's the bathroom but here's the cool part about the bathroom lay it on me when you are looking at the sink uh-huh. So you've got the sink directly in front of you. Yeah. And if you step up to the sink, you're right, right at the counter. Okay. Turn right, you have a door that goes to the toilet. Love that. Turn left, you have a door that goes to the shower and another sink. <gasps> That's nice. So the problem that everyone has when you stay in a hotel room. Especially with multiple people. People are trying to take a shower and you got to go to the bathroom. You got either got to go all the way to the lobby or the pools. Or you wait until that person's done taking a shower. And you don't have to do that in the family suites. And I they have a really that. cool, it's kind of like a walk-in closet. That's there. Nice. There's no door, but it like you walk into this little tiny room and they have thing. It's pretty cool. That's going to have to be our next room for the next vacation. Yep. And I wish I had thought ahead of time to find music to play for this next segment. Um, but I don't. Okay, yeah, that works. So, I think that's Lilo and Stitch's new song, but we're just going to ignore it. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of the... Have Big you, have things. You, wait, wait, before we start Volcano Bay topic, have you been here before? Was this your first time? This was like my third or fourth time. Okay, yeah. Same. Being there. Same. Um, but I, I got to learn a lot more. So my, so when I go there, I usually do like three oh. of the, the three same attractions and then I leave. Buddy, give us the history of EB because I know you want to. I am going to. So there's two different forms of information here and i had a feeling you were gonna be like oh god that's a lot it's so much it is but a lot you are the only one i know that is like i will talk about it all well this is what i think is so cool so volcano bay is a water park like you've never seen before because universal doesn't tote this as a water park i'm so sorry you're good they tote it as a water theme park a water theme park and i think that i mean in my opinion i think that stands true Um, because it is uh, completely unlike a water park I've ever been to before. So the lore of Volcano Bay. Are you Mm -hmm. ready? I'm listening. I'm listening. So it all began with a fiery god called Krakatau. He, through his wrath and fury, dominated the land. He couldn't contain the adventurous spirit of his daughter, Tainui. Mm -hmm. She fell in love with a native youth named Kala. And when her fiery protective father learned of their romance, he flew into a rage and he banished Kala forever to the sky where he became the moon. Mm. Overcome with grief, Tainui's tears became the sea. It was then that Krakatau realized that he had not only succeeded in destroying what mattered to him most, his daughter's happiness. Wow. So at that point, he was then determined to reunite the young lovers. So he reached into the sky, or excuse me, he reached into the earth and pulled it into the sky, creating the volcano of Volcano Bay. Krakatau trapped the remains of his anger and jealousy uh, in the form of a fire spirit, mm-hmm. Val, whom is imprisoned deep inside this volcano. 
So this is how the sky, sea, and earth unite to form the paradise of Volcano Bay. Oh, wow. And what's really amazing about this, and I didn't know this prior to this visit, we went inside the volcano. You can actually go inside it. And when you go inside, if you look hard enough, you can actually come face to face with Vol. Yeah, we talked to him. We did. And that is what I thought was so cool. He's real. He's a real fire spirit that you actually get to speak to. And we held a conversation we with did. him. And it was I, not I, a, a robot. It was a it was a real thing. Correct. And I really, 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 really love the fact that he gave us the same history lesson that you just gave to us. Well, he didn't give us that history lesson. But he gave us a similar history he lesson. He gave us the lore of the Waturi people. Do you have that lesson? Do you want to know it? Of course. Okay. So the lore of the Waturi people. Before they came to Volcano Bay, the Waturi traversed the ocean in outrigger canoes uh, in search of a new home. According to the legend, a mystical fish named Konoku was destined to guide them. Konoku. The voyagers took them to the far corners of the South Pacific, and wherever they went, the Waturi embraced the customs, music, and art of the many people they encountered. But alas, nowhere did they find Konoku. On that search... Uh, On and on they searched until they came to every edge of the world. It was then there they found Kanuku playing in the waves. Within a day, Kanuku and the winds of fortune led the travelers to the shores of Volcano Bay. The Waturi knew that at long last they had found home. And the Waturi believe in living life to its fullest and creating stories through adventure. So when you go to Volcano Bay, everyone that you see there is a part of the Waturi tribe. And they're welcoming you to Volcano Bay to enjoy and have fun. That's so cute. It is. I really, like, I'd been three or four times and I never had dug into that folklore and actually realized that there's a lot of in-depth storytelling with this place. I didn't know that. Look at me. Learning and something new every day. The, the ride names, um, one, of, one of my favorite things. Do you know Kobe. how they greet you? How do they greet you? Kia Ora. Didn't you tell me that's not actually Hawaiian? It comes from Australia, Does I do really? believe. So there's a several different phrases um, that they use throughout Volcano Bay. I don't remember 100% what Kia Ora means, but it's it's essentially like welcome friends. Oh, very nice. Um, so it, it's fun to see that. But um, let's get in and talk about our day at Volcano Bay. Oh my gosh, I would love to do that because I had a blast. I did. Um, so... Do you want to talk about how Volcano Bay is different from other water parks? And the fact that I have to have a band on me. What is it called? A tapu tapu. A tapu tapu. I hate this thing. I love and I hate this thing. I wore this for 2.2 seconds, got yelled at for not wearing it, actively wanted to throw it away because it was so big and bulky. Yet you wear an Apple Watch. Okay, but here's the thing though. My Apple Watch is tiny. A Tapu Tapu is not tiny. And also the band I think is what is so uncomfortable with it. The band has this little notch at the very top of it that hooks into the the strap. Mm-hmm. And then you have the silicone other strap that hooks on at it's the It's literally end of it an Apple keep... Watch, but it's sil- it's all silicone. Yeah, and I don't like it. Well, let's talk about the good things about it. And I it. also was having this weird feeling that my wrist was vibrating, but it wasn't actually vibrating. So I had this like... You no, know, it probably was vibrating because it does it does vibrate. I know. But I think because I thought it was my Apple Watch and I was waiting for a notification. And then every time it would vibrate, I'd look at it and go, nobody's texting me. <laughs> oh. So the Tapu Tapu um, is integral for your entire operation at Volcano Bay. Integral. Um, so Volcano Bay listened to guest feedback. And when they were building this water park, they were asking guests their opinions on things. And the number one thing that people said is they hated waiting in line at water parks. Are you okay over there? Yeah, I'm taking my earrings out because they're hurting my ears. Ah. So the yeah, tap- no, that's annoying. I think yeah. that's the worst part about being at a water theme park is the fact that you do have to wait in line for things. And those lines can get really long. Plus, it gets hot. Mm-hmm. And your feet get hot because you're not wearing any shoes. So that gets hot. And it's just like, okay, I've spent four hours waiting for a ride and I've only done one thing. Well, the great thing about the Tapu Tapu is at Volcano Bay, Mm -hmm. they do not have the standard queue line that you see at water parks. Nope. So they have what's called the virtual queue. Love it. And that's one of the main top or one of the main things that you use your Tapu Tapu for. You can, when you decide you want to go ride a ride, you go to the entrance of the ride and you tap in on a totem and it gives you a time to return. And then you go out and you do whatever else you want in the park. Yep. I love that. I thought it was great. 
Um, so you can go do like Teawa, the fearless river, which is like a lazy river, but not lazy, um, or other things while you're waiting. And then it buzzes and it tells you when it's time for you to return to ride that ride. Um, you can also, you link your express to it. So if you get, um, express or express plus, you can just go in and tap in at the rides immediately. Um, and you can use it to access your lockers. You can set up to four people, give them access to a single locker. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but then talk about like one of the coolest things that they do with Tapu. I don't know. What's the cool thing they do with Tapu? The Tapu Pay. Or Tap to Pay, as tap they call it. Tap to Pay. Yes. I like this because I'm not one that like likes to have my phone or my credit card or my ID or all these things that I need. Soggy money. Soggy money. Tapu Tapu allows you to link your credit card with a PIN number that you set up prior to entering Volcano Bay. And... I can pay using it. It's almost like if you go to Disney World and you you link your magic band with a credit card mm-hmm. to your magic band. Similar concept here. Yep. Except it's all waterproof. Yep. So and and the other thing that I did read is that you can actually limit if you want your children to have access to this. Mm-hmm. So like say if I put my credit card and I want Rob to have access to it, I can go, okay, Rob only gets access to like 50 bucks Mm -hmm. or I want him to only have access to like $20. Or if you got small children that are like, Oh, I can have ice cream for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Tap, tap, tap. They can be like, no, you don't give them access to it at all, which I do like. So this allows you to go up to the bar. Yes. You will still need to have your ID with you. So until universal or the state of Florida allows us to, to have photos as a, not just photos, but like some sort of way for us to, to realize that people over 21 are, are here to purchase mm-hmm. alcohol. You do have, you do are required to show your ID. Um, but you're able to pay using that. So it's one less card I have to get out of my locker. Yep. It's and also you just nice. link it through the Universal Studios mobile yeah. app. It's also nice to, to do that when it comes to getting food. So um, if we when we went to go get our tacos and our nachos, it was simple and easy for us to kind of boop, done, ready to go, yep. which I really appreciated. You want to talk about the festering frog? Oh, Is it festering or feastering? Feastering. Feastering frog. I think Volcano Bay has one of the best water park food I have ever eaten. I have always enjoyed the food that I have eaten oh, there. Oh my God, I love it. And if you go to Volcano Bay... Get the tacos. Get the tacos, get the nachos, get the poke bowl. It is so good. It's literally a little uh, quick service spot that is shaped into a frog. With so a fat, can, yeah, it's a thatched roof yes. and it's in the shape of a frog. You cannot miss it. And next to it is a bar. So you're able to get tacos and then a drink. Um, but their tacos are, it comes with two tacos, plantain chips. And it's, I think I want to say it was like eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, something like that. It's very mm-hmm. reasonably priced. Um, they also offer a poke bowl, which is loaded up with a whole bunch of things and a wonderful vinaigrette sauce that comes on top of that, mm-hmm. which is also similar in the 13 to $15 range, which is great. And then they offer one of my personal favorites is the nachos. They're loaded up with all the fixings on top of it. And that ranges again in that thirteen to fifteen dollar price range. They offer Coke products, um, and bottles of water, and you can also get um, some different kind of uh, Mexican beer. So you get Modelo or Corona, which is an option here. Love that. Hmm. So yeah, the the loaded nachos are topped with chili, cheese, sour cream, and jalapenos. Oh, delicious! Um, and I know you've had that before. For I this have. particular day, we both got the same thing. We got the chicken tacos, which is marinated grilled chicken, lettuce, onion, cilantro, queso fresco on a soft flour tortilla, and I- it was. Like a purple tortilla? Yes. Blue. No, it's blue. Blue, yeah. I recommend that you get the taco sauce that comes with that and ask them for an extra side of sour cream. <laughs> and uh, the other they had was the taco carne asada? Yep, the carne asada. Carne so you asada. have an option for Ground it, which for chicken. is the same toppings, the same fixings, and that same plantain chips that come along with it. But you get an option of either the carne asada or chicken. Yep, and it was really good i was almost tempted to go back and get more it was so good and then you do have that option of that poke bowl which is um a salmon poke bowl i believe yes um and it comes with like i said probably one of the best vinaigrettes i've ever had Mm -hmm. it's very delicious um and that doesn't mean they they have more restaurants on park they have sushi yes uh in an area of the park they've got a social club up towards the front which is where i used to always get this like coconut chicken thing they also Um, have options for if you're not feeling super adventurous they have like a pizza burgers and um hot dogs mm -hmm. spot as well so if you do have those picky kids that are just not so ready to try something crazy they have that kid-friendly options which is pretty nice yep um and then can we we talk about the very disappointing ice cream situation please okay sure so i wanted to try something called the waturi fusion which is an ice cream that has four different flavors it's got 
like banana, blue raspberry, uh-huh. peach, and strawberry, I think. I, something I, like I may that. have it wrong. Um, but it has like four different flavors. It's called the Rotary Fusion. It was really cool. I was super excited to get it. It looks beautiful, too. Um, they're apparently, they're Instagram worthy. Ice cream machines were broken, and all they had available at that time was chocolate ice cream. In line. And I stood there for so long waiting for it before I realized what was happening. And it was really sad, but that's okay because I'll get a Rotary Fusion next time we go back. Because it's the only place on the park that has like soft serve ice cream. They have like ice cream sandwiches and stuff throughout the stores, but that is the only location that has the soft serve. There's a bug on my ceiling. Really sad. Yeah, there is. And it keeps um, moving and it keeps freaking me out. I really enjoyed the Dancing Dragons Boat Bar. The Dancing Dragons Boat Bar. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's where we both got a drink. So we both, this time around, they have, uh, it's a full bar, but they also have specialty cocktails that come in a Volcano Bay souvenir cup. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to let them in on the little secret here. What? If you don't want the souvenir cup, it is cheaper for you to put it in a plastic cup. I already have the souvenir cup, so, um, so I asked if cups. I can get it in just like the regular cup because um, I already have a souvenir cup and I just I didn't want to pay for another souvenir cup because no. I don't need one. And he said that that was fine. So it's the same price as the refill. So the regular cocktail with the souvenir cup is seventeen dollars. With the non souvenir cup in the plastic cup, it is thirteen fifty. Mm. I and it's the same size. It's yep. the same exact size. So, so get it in the plastic cup. We got the Volcano Bay Rum Punch. Oh, so good. Which was cruising aged light rum, yep. Bacardi Raz, yes. fresh pineapple juice, grenadine, and topped with Bacardi Black and a flower. It was so pretty. It was, and it was so good. Oh, it was delicious. Until Jordan knocked mine over. Rip. But that's okay. We forgive him because he bought me more drinks later. Mm. Um <laughs> But I mean, we went, we rode um, Krakatau, which yes. is the water coaster. I just realized we haven't talked about the rides. Um, oh we rode Krakatau, gosh. which is the water coaster. Did we ride Makapuiki? The, the tube ride? The tube ride. Do you remember? What I think that's what when, the one it was called was Maka, Let Maka me uh, fill in the dead space while I pull this up. Oh, um, I do. You know what I really did like, though, that we did that we didn't have to wait for was the Action Lazy River. That was a blast. Uh, Tayawa, the fearless river. Yes. So we, you have to wear a life vest for this. It is mandatory. It is not certified an exception. Coast Guard. What? It's a cert- It has to be a certified Coast Guard life jacket. Uh, you have to wear a life jacket. It's mandatory. Don't get in the thing even, about it. Even adults. Yeah, literally. You have to wear one. Um, because, and if I feel like if you don't wear one, you are asking to drown. <laughs> and I did actively drown. Um, and there was, it, this is so fast, so quick, so fast. Um, it is fantastic though. It has a tidal wave that comes down every yes. little bit and it's got that, and the beating falls. of the beating of the drums right bum, before bum, the bum, waves bum, hit. Bum, 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 bum. And it has waterfalls, which is pretty good. Um, no, this is great. I, I really, really like that. I also, we also did their regular lazy river. Um, low, you do not have to wear a life jacket for this. This is your typical lazy river. There's tubes. You don't have to have a tube. Um, but it is very much chill this Mm -hmm. is a very 360 difference from um the action river that is there it is your typical hang on hold on let me give you the legal name kopikawai winding river love it your typical lazy river that's what this is you go through a cave that has really cool lights yes very pretty very picturesque i feel like every spot that we did even like the rides, even the um, the action, or even the co- the water coaster, even the tube ride that we did, it was very picturesque mm-hmm. spots that we were going into. Um, tell them about the fun tap to play option of your tapu tapu I and how that interacts that. with uh, the winding river. So when you actually wear your tapu tapu, you get the option to do what's called tap to play. So this is like there's little spots that you can totems totems that you can tap your tapu on. And then you can screw with people that are actively inside of these spots. It triggers waterfalls, fountains. Um, One spot, we literally drowned that poor girl. We sure did. We killed Got her. Got her right in the face. Yeah, we did. She she was like, <coughs> how did these, that happen? These totems are also located all around the park, they're not everywhere. just in Kapikawai. No, they're everywhere. So um, we were able to do some in the cave, which was cool when you get to meet um, the head, the, 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 
Val. Thank you. When you get to meet him, um, there's also moments that you can do that during um, any of the two brides. There's some extra spots there. There's some extra spots when it comes to the Action River and to the Lazy River. And there were some even spots during um, uh, just walking around that we that you could kind of like let up a geyser. You would let up um, spots for like sprinklers and stuff like that. So it was pretty neat that everywhere you went, you were able to to kind of interact with mm-hmm. not just with your family, but with other families to to literally get them drenched yep and the other i I just looked it up so the other ride that we rode was um puihi of the maku puiki round raft ride so it's two slides side by side it was fun we had we rode with two random strangers um, and i said we all had a blast though that was so much fun and so terrifying do you remember when we we went down the drop he was like whoo yes (laughs) um and that was fun so we did have a 200 minute wait for we did um Krakatau, yes. which is the big water coaster that they have. It's their like number one attraction. Um, but the great thing about it is once you wait in the virtual queue and it's time for you to ride, you, you can... go into what's called a buffer queue. Yes. And that buffer queue can be up to 15 minutes long. Um, we got in line. It said it was time for us to ride after 200 minutes. We It was walk right on. We walked yeah. right onto our boat. Uh, our raft and we rode uh, and we were like in and out in no time and it was an absolute I just wish that ride would go longer because it is so good it's a fun ride I thought that was a blast you know what makes me sad we got some air time too what makes that you you wouldn't ride Koakiri body plunge with me (sighs) so maybe it was I think it was just it was a long day we were out in the sun we didn't get sunburned, but we got right on. We got crisp, and it was and like it okay. Also, it was go. like one of those situations where like you walk. Okay, here's my. If my you're going hurt. to VB, I would recommend that you buy some water shoes because that concrete hurts. And it, here's the thing: the concrete's not hot because at Volcano Bay they missed the sidewalks it's the with water. Bridges. It's the bridges and the sand everywhere oh that gosh. gets under your feet, and it hurts. Like it actively hurts. So I will not be going to Volcano Bay without some water shoes the next time that we go Mm -hmm. it was it was quite painful my feet hurt one thing that we are recovering from it yeah one thing we didn't do this go around because we've done it in the past is waturi beach which is the big beach when you first enter at the base of the volcano that is also a um, wave pool it's a giant wave pool and it has two different modes it's got to like tame waves which Mm -hmm. is just like waves and then it's got like raging waves like drown you kill you waves but i did like where we sat it was kind of like secluded off to the side which is nice we did have a very pretty view of the action river which was great we also got to see some of the um uh, ika moana the rides yeah ika moana which one's that again? Ikuma wanted, that's the blue and green slide. Yep. We got to see some of those from we our set, view. Actually, we set under. Yeah. Uh, but under it was it. also kind of nice to kind of like take a break from all the, the water in the rides and from from literally uh, from all the people and just kind of like we mm-hmm. brought our books. We just kind of rested for a little bit. Cool? Huh. The area of the park that we were in is the River Village. Love that. So it's actually broken down. You've got Wave Village, River Village, and Rainforest Village. It's broken down into three sections. Love it. So we were in the Rainforest, or not Rainforest, sorry, we river. were in the River Village because we were over next to the rivers. That was really pretty. Yeah, no, I was a big fan. The only thing that I felt like it was that I, I wish wasn't was I felt like I was literally having to walk everywhere around my butt to get to my elbow. Like I felt like I was going around in circles and I had no idea where I was. Mm-hmm. Like the whole entire time I was just like, are you guys lost? Because I feel lost. I do realize now since we, since this was the first time I went to the volcano, I just realized you can actually cut through the center of the park if you go through the volcano. Mm, we should have done that. Um, if you go in, you go in next to Kira, uh, Koakiri Body Plunge mm-hmm. and you can come out next to Kala and Tainui Serpentine Body Slides. Very nice. Um, and I wasn't, I didn't think that there was a cut through, but there totally is. Um, you can walk through the waterfall in the volcano. Mm. We remember we did that. We I did. didn't, I didn't want to cause I didn't want to get wet again cause it was cold. But we did. Um, but we did. Um, and then they have other, um, other attractions there at the park. They've got a tons of, tons of other, they've got the, oh yeah, and oh no, uh, drop slides where, yep. oh yeah, drops you at the end of the slide. It drops you six feet into a pool. And then the, oh no body slide drops you. I think it's like. 10 feet into oh a pool that was good though i feel like that was we weren't we did not open it we did not close it we were there we got there what about noonish and we left probably about mm-hmm. five or mm-hmm. five or six somewhere between uh, we left around five because it was before they closed yeah so we we were there for i think that was enough time i mean you definitely could have done i could have done a full day mm-hmm. but i'm glad we didn't do a full day yep and then one last thing i want to touch base on volcano bay and then we can move to what we had for dinner yes please um so um 
there are some premium services that Volcano Bay offers. I don't know the pricing of them off the top of my head, um, but they offer cabanas. They have private cabanas and family cabanas. Um, if you rent those and it's like 600, I think they're going from anywhere between 600 to $900 right now as we're in the summer. Um, and it, but it's for the full day. You get a private cabana that you can close the curtains on three sides, mm-hmm. unlimited towel refills, a mini fridge, a tapu totem in your cabana. So you yes. don't have to go to the ride to tap in. You can make your reservation from inside your cabana. Correct. You get a designated server who, when you order food, you can mobile order food on the app. They will deliver the food to you at the location. <gasps> Just think about all the tacos I could I eat. Know. <laughs> and then they have uh, premium seating, which gives you two lounge two lounge chairs, a big canopy that you can open and close, a lockbox between your lockers, a designated server to bring you food to your or drinks, your uh, food or drinks to your location. And then they have reserved seating, which isn't. Uh, I think you get towels with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like a couple of uh, sun tanning chairs. There's not really shade. There's, they have umbrellas in the area, but the, you don't get like a designated shaded area. Correct. Um, but you do get designated seating. Um, and all of those are the premium and reserve seating are located at Watsuri Beach. Mm-hmm. The cabanas are located all across the property. They're everywhere. And they have two family cabanas and those those fit like 16 people. Yeah, they're massive. They're, yeah, they're huge. Uh, but that's cool. And to get in and out of Volcano Bay, we got to walk from Cabana Bay because we were staying next door. It's one of the amenities of Cabana Bay. You have walking access. Bring your room key. But if you... Yes, bring your room key. But if you're not staying at Cabana Bay... Oh, my. Ashley, do you want to run through... Do you Have you ever gone in yes. that way? Okay, that's run the only through, way I've ever gone because I've never them, seen a Cabana Bay. So this was, this was easier than the normal way. So if you are... It's still cool, though. Correct. However... This was it's a process. Yeah. Correct. So if you are attending Volcano Bay for the day, you start off your morning by parking at City Walk. In the South Garage. In the South Garage. You'll let the, your person know or the, the team member know when you go in and you pay to park. You'll let them know that you are visiting Volcano Bay and that is where you would need to park. They will assist you in showing you which garage you are headed to. And then you park your vehicle and you get on a bus, a specific bus. Only an accordion for bus. an accordion bus, only for Volcano Bay guests. So this does not take you to City Walk. This does not take you to Islands or to Studios. It only, only, only takes you to Volcano Bay. You get on that bus. You head over to Volcano Bay. Then you go through security. Then you get to Volcano Bay. Oh well, you no! Know, you go through security, and then you go down into the ground. Oh yes, down through the ground, a tunnel, through a tunnel, up, up escal- an, ele- an escalator, escalator. <laughs> up an elevator. Well, they do have elevators, so if you do have a wagon, stroller, or a wheelchair, or an ECV, you do have access to that. So it is um, wheelchair mm-hmm. accessible. They do have an elevator for you. However, if you do not need one of those, you are going up an escalator. Then you're going through ticketing. Then you go through the entrance. Then you go through ticketing. Then you go through the hey. You've made it. Scan your tickets. And get your tapu tapu. The then most you're in beautiful Bay. entrance because you round the corner and you oh, see Watsuri Beach and that gorgeous. big volcano. It's and at gorgeous, night, but it's such a process to go that way. At night, they shine red lights yes. under the water, so it looks like lava coming off. Oh, of the it's volcano. beautiful. It's so pretty. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, but I would definitely recommend staying at Cabana Bay because you get to walk and skip all of that mess, mm-hmm. which was so much better. I will say though, I think it was a very innovative process for universal to come up with when they they built this in a small triangle up against i4 and i think they did a great job of being able to do that and to get you to and from volcano bay fairly quickly correct when we left volcano bay we met up with rob and zach yes and um, a couple days, the day before that uh, one of my bosses i was like i really want good asian food in Orlando and I just I haven't found a spot yet if anybody so, has any good recommendations on Chinese food Asian yes. food please let us know yes because we're um, still actively looking he did name a place that I think was pretty good a little pricey but still pretty good and it's called Bento I've been here before of Orlando Dr. Phillips yes it's its official full name if you are local to the area this is right next to American Social or as Am- or as many of us know it as AMSO mm-hmm. um, it's also right next to uh, Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A and Bunt Cakes. Yep. It's, it's a, the same everything closet. Bunt Cakes. I'm sorry. Uh, it's actually located at 7335 West Get Sand Lake. Get out of here. Boom. Plugged it. Um, so if you look on Google, it says about 10 to $20 a person, which I do think is comparable if you're not me and Ashley. <laughs> Um, because we walked in and I was like, I want a bento box and I want sushi. sushi and you were like, I want a 
$20 sushi platter and I want soup and whatever it was that you ordered for Rob. We were just like, give us everything. Literally. And in, it was it was good. And, I liked you it. You know what my favorite part about it is as the five of us are sitting there actively eating. We're like, hey, what do we want to do? Wait, before you, before you said, what did you eat? Oh, God, I had so much. I had so the sushi box comes with a Philly roll to start. And then you get your option of two additional um, specialty rolls that you get to pick. So it comes with six pieces of each of those. And then I also got a it also comes with a ginger salad and a seaweed salad. And then I also got miso soup and additional and an additional sushi roll, which was their dynamite roll. Um, And it was so good. And then I got a Diet Coke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i got the sweet and sour bento box which came with sweet and sour chicken white rice lo mein or chow mein depending on who you are a ginger salad but i requested no ginger and i got what i call shrimp sauce some other people call yum yum sauce the world calls it a yum yum sauce you're the only weirdo okay. that calls it shrimp sauce. uh garlic green beans and um what i just call the crispies if you go to an asian the restaurant and they give you the little crispy crackers crunchy but they were crunchies yeah but they were like coated in sugar they were like a dessert crunchy and then i got a spicy tuna roll no it was like spicy crab or spicy shrimp i don't remember it was delicious but it was I delicious bites of it and you got miso soup which was also good yes it was um but what oh what and an happened... egg roll oh yeah and we got an egg roll oh yeah okay now can i talk about what happened yes my favorite part about hanging out with all of these boys and always being the only girl because julia works and i love her and i love when she hangs out with us and i miss the fact that she was not with us girl boss however i really love the fact that these boys are just like hey let's do something fun what should we do well it was it was early it was only like 6 37 and o'clock Universal had closed early because they had grad bash going on mm-hmm. um which is massive very hectic Try not to schedule your vacation around Gap Bash. Um, so we were like, what do we do? What do we do? And um, all of a sudden, the next thing you know, we're in the car on our way to Magic Kingdom. <laughs> it was we're because like, we're going to Magic Kingdom. And it was so much fun. It was such a spur of the moment decision. Mm. None of us were prepared for this whatsoever. It was insane. And it was so good. It was so fun. We got to park at the Polynesian because... Um, you had dining reservations i i did (laughs) if you know you know and that's all i'm gonna say so we headed into the poly it was cold that night yeah it was so chilly so i got a sweatshirt because it was cold so thanks to i got a new little disney sweatshirt and then we headed into magic kingdom Mm -hmm. took the monorail over to preface though the one of the main reasons we did this is jordan and i went to magic kingdom last week and we went we went late in the, huh a couple days before this i yeah, thought we yeah we went at like we got there at eight o'clock at night yep and um the happily ever after fireworks show was at eight forty five that night yeah so we dashed around it and started riding rides and then it ended and then shortly after that yes it um it died the, yeah it died the crowds uh, they left by like 9 45 so the last hour and a half that the park was open it was empty oh and God, we got to do everything that we wanted to so i was like yeah. let's go it's about to be fireworks time and it happened exactly as it is the fireworks happened and then the park cleared out it was so nice well and we got to do everything we hit up pirates of the care well we first started at, at um over in tomorrowland well we started at the emporium no because oh, yeah, yeah. rob got you a surprise he was he like did. he goes keep ashley busy and he i w- and then immediately not 30 seconds later you're like where'd rob go and i was like don't worry he's an adult he help did. me find a sweatshirt because, well, because i was freezing he knows that i every time we go to Matt, every time we go to disney world i always always am wearing a pair of ears i never go to disney world without a pair not when you're doing a spare of the moment trip but this was such a spare of the moment trip that i obviously i didn't have time to come home and grab a pair so when we walked into magic kingdom i felt naked like i felt like people were staring at me because i wasn't wearing a pair of ears and this kid you know like of all this like sibling times that like i want to strangle him rob is a 10 out of 10 sibling and he picks up on things without having to be told anything and he is such a sweet kid he really is and he surprised me with probably now my new favorite pair of ears which are pirate of the caribbean themed ears and i have pictures. Of the caraboon. they are parati of the caraboon and i love them so much and they're they have like the little pirates logo in the middle of them and they're probably my new favorite now that i have and he was, so, oh my God, it was so cute because you guys are all gone and we were sitting in the Emporium and I was waiting for you guys to join. And he goes, 
Ash, Ash, I found these new pair of ears. What do you think? And he pulls them around like from behind his back. And he, well, wait, I have to go back up because he was like, I have this new thing I want to show you. And I was like, okay. He goes, close your eyes. I'm like, okay. Well, he takes my glasses off my face and he puts something on my head. And I'm like, what the frick is going on? And he puts these on and then he tries to put my glasses back on. But because the ear where the ears were, he was having a hard time putting my glasses back on. Sounds right. So I put my glasses back on and he goes, look, I found these new pair of ears. What do you think? And I put them on and he, go- he goes, and I was like, stop. And he goes, I got you a new pair of ears. I know you said you felt naked. So now you don't feel naked anymore. Here you go. I hope they're okay. And I was like, no, you didn't. He's like, yeah, I did. And I was like, stop. I, I literally it. wanted to cry in the middle of the Emporium. And then my favorite part is Jordan comes over and Jordan goes, are you buying those? I was like, Robert, he did. <laughs> he bought them for me. It was so cute. And then we headed to Tomorrowland. We did. We headed straight for yes. Carousel of Progress because I haven't gotten to attend it the last three times I've been to Magic Kingdom and it upsets me because it's one of my favorites. It is so good. And I don't know if you noticed this, but the best part is, so we go in and we sit on the seconds of back row so we can see everything. Mm-hmm. And the show starts up and, you know, there's, there's a great, big, beautiful well, tomorrow, tomorrow shining at the Everyone end of the Everyone in our group, we're trying to be quiet, to be respectful of everyone else in the theater, but we're all singing. Did you realize the couple behind us started laughing at us? Mm-hmm. Because they were like, oh my God, these full grown adults are over here singing this word for word, speaking the show lines <laughs> word for word. Yeah, we were. And I'm really sad that I've never been on Carousel when it messes up. I totally want to one day. Um, but it was really good. And it was fun because we got to journey with a family through um, the last century and oh see God, how so the world changed. And then what do we go ride? The People Mover. The Tomorrowland. No, we rode no, Space. I'm we sorry. Rode space. We rode Space Mountain. And what did I finally get to do on Space Mountain? Uh, have a whole entire train to ourselves. You got the front row. Which resulted in me getting the front row. I'm so proud of you. I've always wanted the front row. And do you know, because I've never gotten to ride in the front row. Mm, It was violent. Uh, Let me tell you something. I thought I was going to die. (laughs) Because you do. Because then I could see everything. Yes. And you realize you can see nothing but shadows of metal and rebarb going by your head (laughs) at 30 miles an hour. Um, And I just remember there were several times I was like, oh God. Oh God, I'm going to die. Oh God. And it was so much fun. I will <laughs> say I do not oh like God. the back seat. No, I don't if like you, any of that. If you, are, if you are a man, do try not to sit in the back seat. You won't have children um, anymore. Because yeah, you're, yeah, it is, it's, it's a man problem. <laughs> um, I, cause I had to do that with Jordan the other day. He was like, I don't like the back. Will you ride? And I was like, sure. And then I rode back there and I realized it very quickly why Jordan did not want to ride in the back seat. Cause it's horrible. And then afterwards is when we were the people mover. And I got upset over this. Go ahead. So the ride, he stopped or did whatever. And it stopped right as our group got to load. Separated. So the four, you, Zach, and Rob yes. all sat down in one car. And you can only fit four people to a car. So we knew we were going to have to sit. Me and Jordan were going to sit in the one right behind you guys. But the guy puts up the chain and walks away. Bye-bye. And then they restarted the ride. But the man took so long to get back. We were all in our own separate car. That you guys were on a different train. Oh, driven train. That's right. We got set on a completely different train. And I'm not going to lie. I was a little irritated because the man knew that we were all a party. Yeah. But was just like, go here. And I was like, but, but, yeah, okay. Bye. And we got to ride in the train all by ourselves. Um, but I was a little upset that I didn't get to ride with you guys. And then we hauled our booty over to Haunted Mansion. On Road Haunted Mansion. I believe that that ride is haunted. You know why? It is haunted. Because hatch every box time. Hatchbox? Hat, hat, hat box. Hat box. Every time I get into the scene with Madame Leota, it it's just stops. Because the world hates me. It comes to a complete stop every time. The world hates me. That's why. Um, but I also love that because I love Madame Leota and I love that scene. You, on the other hand, was screaming like a banshee because you didn't like that scene. I don't like that scene. I don't like Haunted Mansion. Why? Because it scares me. <laughs> I'm almost 28 Grim year old Ringo woman. Come out to me. socialize. Ooh, they do. What um, did your hitchhiking ghost do to you guys? Uh, put a beard on Rob and removed my head. Oh, he turned my head into a balloon. Love that for Took you. Took my head off and then went and it blew up like a balloon. Love that for you. And then you know what my favorite part about this whole night was? What? We got a Mickey on a stick. We did. We got you got a Mickey on a stick. I we Rob, Rob got, got a, pretzel. a pretzel and me and Zach and Jordan got popcorn. 
Correct. And so it is. And let me tell you, that was the best Coca-Cola I have had in my life. Oh, but crispy Sprite, dude. It was so, so great. crispy, those drinks were. Dude, it was so great. And then we rode Pirates and, because I had the oh, Pirates ears. But wait, without giving away too much, I had to have that candied bacon. If you know, <laughs> you know. I want the candy bacon. Um, I wanted it right now. <laughs> then... Dead. No, we rode, um, we God, rode, you we didn't Jesus. ride pirates next. We rode, oh no, we yeah, did ride we pirates. Rode pirates. Yeah. We rode pirates. Um, we, we got had an a boat, entire boat to ourselves. That we was were, so cool. We were in the middle of the boat, so we didn't get wet. Nope, it was great. Um, and the big scene with the big boat looked Boom. so cool. The mist Boom. was just on was so point. Great. That was so fantastic. It was so good, the smells. And mm. then we went over to Tiana's and we looked at Tiana's new ride. Mm-hmm. We saw some what of What we could see. And um, They were Rob not testing anything that night. And Rob beat Zach's Bodie on checkers, which was very fun to kind of just get a little nice little break from for a we second. We found a payphone that yeah, still we works. Did. We did. Um, and then we rode Big Thunder Mountain. The wildest ride in the wilderness. And I'm sorry, but that was probably the worst ride of Big Thunder I've ever had because of the guests. Um, I got to ride. Yo, yeah, there were some folks behind us that were just being obnoxious i mean screaming like at the high pitch screaming we hadn't even started the ride or gone town like any point that was terrifying and you already go through a room where there's a really high pitched noise and so they're screaming oh my god it was horrible but the thing that irritated me and zach the most we were flying i mean that thing was fly. i was coming up out of my seat i was yeah. getting some good airtime. rob and i were sitting next to each other and i was like lean i was literally sliding the girl behind us every time um you would come to a place where it looked like you could reach up and touch something she would tell her friends to jump and grab it. Stop it. And her friend was like, that's how you get a broken arm. Not just a broken... Oh, God, I hate people. And I was just like, it was... They were they were really loud and obnoxious and annoying. Um, but it was, one part was really funny. Because hmm. Jordan was sitting in the middle of his seat. And it was me and Zach in the back. And then Jordan in the middle. And then he you... He was just like... Why? He had both of his arms up. And we hit one of those curves so fast. It was pitch black. So all I can see is Jordan's silhouette. The next thing I know, Jordan's silhouette disappears. I see it rip off to the left side and then it was just gone. gone. And for a second I was like, oh my God. The turn was so sharp for him. His whole body collapsed into the seat. He died. And it was hilarious. Rip, Jordan. And then we got to ride the monorail back. We rode the mon- no, monorail. No, wait. Oh, wait. Then we exited. But we went through all of the stores on the left hand side because I made you guys walk through all of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Ashley, I gotta go. I gotta go take care of some doggies. Yeah, but you still enjoyed it because you got to see some bushy things that I know on your list that you want. I really want. So apparently, Loungefly has come out with a new Tomorrowland bag and Tomorrowland fanny pack. Yes, and I couldn't find them that night. Um, and I'm really I think sad. it's probably because it was in Tomorrowland and not in that store. I'm gonna have to look for them. They're the only thing that sucks is they're gonna be like eighty nine dollars. Hey, you want to go? But I want them. <laughs> At 9.46. We'll, we'll, get there. we'll get there with just enough time to ride Space Mountain once. Woo, let's go. No. Um, no, gas prices took, are too high to do that this correct. week. And then we took the monorail back to our hotel. Back because we parked at the Polynesians. So we and got you to, made friends with people. I always make friends with people. As you always do. I made friends with people in the Haunted Mansion, too. Yeah, you sure did. People from Michigan. From Michigan. Love it. And then... Made friends with people in the monorail. That was fun. And then, can I make friends everywhere I go? Yeah. It's a but problem. But then we, so after that, Zach gave us all a ride back to the resort. He dropped us off. Um, me, you, and Jordan stayed one night at yep. Cabana Bay. Oh, had a delicious McChicken. We did. We got a McChicken and some fries on oh, our way I in that night. And we McChicken. watched Bluey. I love Bluey. I will wholeheartedly admit I'm a 30-year-old and I will watch Bluey because it's adorable. And then we slept. Ashley. Dustin. That's going to be our new intro, guys. Yes. Um, but we had a very good sleep. We slept till about 10, 9, 30, 10. Do you know what happened when I came home? What? I s- took a nap until 5 o'clock. I went to work. I went to bed. I went to work. I went Must to be bed. nice. It was so nice. And that was that was our staycation, guys. We had, that was it. And we, you know what was great is as much food as we had and drinks and buying a shirt. I don't think I shirt, spent that much money. I spent less than $150. Same. No, no, no. I take that back. I spent less than 200 because our dinners um, were a bit expensive. However, Jordan technically played for my dinner at um, Mama Della's because we split the room. 
Oh, yeah. So I used, well, I guess he didn't pay for it then because I used his, what he paid me for his share of the room. Uh, anywho. Um, so this is confusing. <laughs> but yeah, so I spent probably around $200 over the course of uh, two and a half days. Um, but I loved it because I got experiences that were amazing. And I did get a t-shirt from Disney, which I love. It's like an acid wash shirt with yeah, the castle on it. So nice. Um, but other than that, we paid for experiences and food and dining and fun. And I think that it was well needed and well deserved. Yeah. We got to hang out with friends, which is always a blast. And we got to celebrate Rob. Yeah. Cause Rob landed his dream job. He did this week. And we're super proud of him for it. I'm beyond super proud. Excited. I'm beyond proud. Like I am now representing uh, as I wore his t-shirt while we were playing in the park for where he's going to work. And I am a very, very proud big sister. And if I talk anymore, I'm going to start crying because I did. Us. Well, we want to hear from you guys. Is there a theme park that you want us to have our next staycation at? And by next staycation, I mean just go spend the day at because hotels are expensive. I would love to do a little mini staycation at my um, Disney resort. Because our annual pass holder stuff gets us a little discount. Okay. Better yet, if that. between Universal, Disney, let us know. Is there a resort that you want us to go check out? Do you want to know more about? Do you want to help us help you yeah. plan your vacation? Let us know. We'll totally let you know. <gasps> Shan, if you want to be a sponsor of that episode, you totally can <laughs> and get us a hotel room. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait for her to come back down. I'm really excited. I miss little Shan. We need to do SeaWorld. I'm waiting. We have to wait because you know what happens in two weeks for SeaWorld? What? My favorite festival in the entire world, which is SeaWorld Seven Seas Festival. Is that the food one? That's the food one. Oh, it we'll is SeaWorld's version of Food and Wine. And I think it is fantastic. I think, to be honest with you, I'm going to probably get some crap for this, but I do think it's probably one of the best fest food festivals because it is only local food here in the state of Florida. Oh. It's local breweries, local wineries, local alcohol, and local food. You know what all this talk about food's doing? Making me hungry. It's making me hungry. I think it's time for dinner. Yeah. So, friends, we want to thank you guys for joining us today. I know this was a bit of a longer episode. We went on a tangent because we wanted to tell you guys about all of the fun and give you helpful hints how to plan your trip here at Volcano Bay. So, until next time, stay safe, stay educated. And share a podcast with your friends, your family, and of course, your favorite bartender. Hey, don't forget, follow us on those social media channels. You can find a link to all of those social media channels at OrlandoUnpluggedPodcast.com. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, make sure you keep an eye out for all our fun photos that we took of our little staycation. Because I have a lot. Yes, we do. Until next time, we'll see you later, guys. Bye, guys.